I am a Apple historian. I track down, attempt to identify, and preserve rare apples. By the middle of the 19th century, there were hundreds of apple varieties being grown in Maine. But the commodity form of agriculture forced us into sort of the one size fits all. This apple here is the quintessential Maine apple. This is a Macintosh. Inside this Mac, there are seeds. And if you want to obtain a Macintosh tree, you cannot do it by the seed because every seed will yield some new apple, something that has never been before, just like you and me. All of us have two biological parents and we are similar to both of them, but we are not identical to either of them. If the Macintosh seed does not come true to type, how are we gonna get more Macintosh trees? Well, we do that by grafting. And when you graft, you take a tiny piece of the variety that you want to replicate and you splice it onto a tree with roots. That's called the rootstock. And here we have a graft that I did this past spring. That right there is the piece that I grafted on. That's called the scion, S-C-I-O-N. And this is the splice I made, the graft. And this is what it grew this year. Now here, I did another graft. And you can see there's the graft there, there's the scion. Just a little piece is all you need of the variety you want to replicate. I spliced it onto this, so we'll have two varieties on this tree eventually. What I wound up doing was creating a library of varieties. And on each tree, if I found a rare variety that I thought I needed to save, then I would graft it onto a branch. This is your cyan wood for next spring. And it'll, it will have lost its uh, leaves. They'll all drop off. A stick this long, that's the new wood. That's the graftable wood. This is enough to do maybe one, two, three. You could get four or five grafts, new trees, out of just this stick. So each one of these uh, represents another graft and another variety that I would save. And uh, you could see they all have tags. This is the Cray apple, which came from Aroostook County. It's just a provisional name that I gave it. This tree has multiple varieties on it, but it's primarily on the top is Northern Spy. This apple here is Roxbury Russet and makes fabulous applesauce. This apple is yellow bellflower. This is Black Oxford. It keeps really well in the root cellar. This apple is called Redfield. I particularly love for its winter applesauce. I combine it with Roxbury Russet and the two together make a fabulous sauce. This is not a dessert apple, so it's a bit tart, but it does make a wonderful pie and a wonderful sauce. So as I was getting more deeply into the varieties that were historically grown in Maine, I decided that I had to find a way of saving them because the old trees were dying, but we didn't have the space to do an entire tree of each variety. And that was when we got the idea of doing the Maine Heritage Orchard, an educational orchard of varieties historically grown in Maine. The orchard here is a pretty important collection. It has so many varieties that were grown traditionally in Maine and are now here preserved for future generations. Almost all of the varieties planted here in this orchard would be considered to be heirlooms. And these trees were the first year's planting, which is in 2014. So some of these trees are just now coming into bearing age. All of these trees have been grafted and grown in the nursery for two years prior to planting. Well, the planting effort is actually done largely by volunteers, which is really excellent. Each spring we have a group of volunteers come to plant trees with us, and we'll do a demonstration of how to plant a tree, how deep into the soil it goes, and then people are set out with their, their little trees all wrapped up in shovels, and they'll go dig the holes and, and put the trees in there and water them in and put wood chips around them. And this is a tree that's 
just starting to bear for the first year and it has just a few apples on it and it was a uh, one with a tentative name its tag says Pisca Mountain which is where it came from the old original tree was there and now that it has fruit brought some to John and he said oh well, that's a northern spy so now here's another <laughs> another apple that's been identified many of them are, are pretty exciting in that way as the first fruits are in some cases, people haven't seen for decades. The primary reason for planting them was to have the trees to propagate for cyan wood so that the varieties would not be lost. <laughs> but as a, a byproduct, really, <laughs> or some people might say the main product of the trees are the apples. So we'll use many of them on the fairgrounds for Mafka events and classes. I'm sure some will continue to donate to food pantries and give to volunteers. Part of the goal of this collection is for people to be able to, to start using these apples again and to do different test batches and see if this one makes a good pie or a good sauce or is good for apple brownies or uh, many other uses. And to have these trees available for anyone to come and see and to be able to grow more trees from them is a great little treasure we have here at Mafka. The Maine Heritage Orchard is open to the public year round every day, so anyone is welcome to come visit anytime. People ask me if they should save their old apple tree. With a little pruning, they will produce new wood, and from that new wood, they will produce fruit. And you never know, you may have some rare historic variety that only grew in your town, and you may be the caretaker and the savior of something that should be in the main heritage orchard.